Hey everyone, um, my name's Yan, and welcome to our brand new Minecraft LGBT series. You want to introduce yourself, Lawrence? Oh <laughs> uh, no, I really don't. <laughs> All right, well that's I got Lawrence. distracted. Next I got me. distracted by the trans B in the background. <laughs> Lawrence and I here Hello. are starting a brand new, exciting journey. Not only just playing Minecraft, but in we're going to be talking about. Yeah, in real life, a real life yep. journey of learning and mentorship and talking about LGBTQ plus topics. So I'm Yan, I use they, them pronouns, and I am non-binary and trans, and I'm pansexual. I'm a college student, and I'm actually in my last semester of college. Then I'll go ahead and introduce myself too. Hi, I'm Lawrence. I am also pan and go by gender fluid non-binary because i'm a greedy little gremlin because <laughs> <laughs> there's no limit no limit there's no on li labels. i will i will literally take everything because it's it's all cool and good and i appreciate it all and i'm For also sure. a college student in my first year uh, well, technically second semester, but I but Yun has been my mentor for a whole semester, and we have been working through a lot of stuff and talking. And because of that, we decided to try to document kind of like our mentorship and also what we talk about because we feel like it's really helpful. We both felt we had a a good mix of different stages of our lives. Um, I'm obviously older by about three three-ish years four-ish years mm -hmm. i have just been living out a lot longer all trans b and trans of course you can see we have our beautiful uh lgbt texture pack here going on today's topic is going to be about talking about um being lgbt in academic settings and how to come out to your peers and also how to just navigate that kind of area I think something that we could start off with probably is talking about how well obviously if you already you already kind of know what your identities are um, how to come out in that academic setting especially in, in college I could give some insight on maybe high school but um, in like the college setting how most of the time that you're with your peers it's not like you're going to see them for the rest of like the four years it's kind of like more of like a short-term kind of setting and how to manage through that. Yeah, I absolutely agree that going from, at least in American public high school, where you have seven class periods every single day with the same people versus college, which can be extremely sporadic. And right now we're filming in 2021. So a lot of our educational experiences have been moved online. Mm -hmm. which creates an even bigger sense of distance and kind of being temporary. Since I would spend a lot of time with the actual people in my classes, I would actually become like, I would say I had a lot more friends in high school than I did college, just because of how often you would spend with them. If you identify under certain identities that maybe is not very visible to people, you have to establish that identity to, to, your, to your group to your fellow classmates, to your teachers even. I grew up in a high school that was very accepting and thankfully, well, there, it was like half and half, but thankfully I was with a group of people who were very accepting. Oh, another, <laughs> before we move on, just to cl clarify any kind of confusion that may happen, we have keep inventory on because we're gonna be talking about a lot of stuff and not really paying attention to, fully paying attention to what's going on in the game my at least my group of friends in high school it's not that they were um not welcoming to like lgbt identities in fact a, i would say the majority of my friends after i graduated high school and came to college and some years have passed have come out um either in their gender identity or their sexual orientation i would say the majority of us were not openly talking about it Mm -hmm. And I don't think that was necessarily because of we were afraid of stigma from students. It was more that I think a lot of our family environments were actually very pressuring and not welcoming. Coming out is a lifelong journey and everyone has the right to make their own decision and, and do it safely. But 
the act of admitting to yourself or realizing to yourself or thinking like, oh, I might be queer in one way or another can be really scary. But then once you start vocalizing it and actually, oh, where did you get an egg? <laughs> I don't know. Wait, can you play some I'm, of the I'm having a serious monologue here, Lawrence. And you're throwing baby chickens at me. <laughs> May you place down the furnace. <laughs> Wait, if we kill it, will it give us meat? No. I have oh two raw gosh. chicken, though, that we can share. Can oh, we, like, can we? Oh, would we survive killing this polar bear? No. Okay, I won't. I won't. <laughs> I just won't go there. In essence, just having like a supportive school environment, that's wonderful, or a friend group, but also it's its very valid if like you're conflicted about how much you should reveal uh, in a school environment to teachers, as well as just because might implicate you in like family situations that you're not yeah. ready, to, ready to face. I'm not too sure on like how these laws have actually been placed or if they have or if they're legalized or anything but sometimes um coming out to like f to like peers or teachers can maybe endanger you yeah d disclosure even if not in policy there are some people who feel morally for one reason or another in their eyes morally obligated to out you without your permission so it definitely would be my recommendation in a high school environment where I feel like most people would still be living with their parents to not come out at, at school to faculty, to, to teachers, unless you're okay with knowing, hey, um, I will not have as much control over how public my identity is if I hadn't c come out to teachers or, mm -hmm. or anything like that. When I was in high school, I came out when I was 15 years old. I was out to some close friends about, in particular, wanted to go by a different name. And I bashfully kind of mentioned pronouns, wanting to use they, them pronouns, but in a very gentle way. Like, it was more of an afterthought at that point. But I was very lucky to have friends who supported me. Going into college was almost easier in some ways. Here's here's pros of, of college and being queer if you have a campus that's not openly actively harmful or malicious because our campus is so big and because the nature of our classes are very temporary where you don't see the people every single day in your class so if you do want to try out a new name at college or if you want to just begin using your new chosen name you can do that i would say fairly easily names are you can literally use a different name in every single course you take, and no one's going to know the difference. In the digital age where we're now having a lot of online classes, you can definitely change your name on whatever video call software you're using. Even though your legal name may be registered with the college, a lot of colleges allow you to make a second email or a preferred name because there's a lot of people who go by their middle name or a nickname or just, there's plenty of reasons why people go by different names than their legal name. I think when it comes to pronouns, it's definitely a lot more about how confident and willing are you to, are you gonna be to enforce those? This is the downside, the con, is like while names are probably more easily like enforced, pronouns are harder to enforce, I think mainly because that's more of a practice skill for some people. Mm -hmm. And if you're not getting as much practice of seeing someone every single day, it's going to be a lot harder to change like speech patterns. Yeah, I think you could probably have like any kind of name. And in the end, if it doesn't really matter how people perceive the name to be gendered, they'll still call you the name versus um, oh, yeah. your pronouns, how they see you. That is a lot more. It feels a lot feels a lot more like solidified to some people. In language, the number of pronouns is, oh, I oh. died, is a lot more restricted. <laughs> At least that's more about language and probably gen gender identity related. When it comes to I guess, sexual orientation, that's, I, I mean, I guess that doesn't really come up quite as often in a classroom setting. Mm -hmm. But if you're someone who looking for a relationship typically you're going 
to a place with a larger number of students. So you're probably going to see way more representation. People are older, so you'll probably see more students who are out. Which was always really comforting for me, even if I wasn't oh, super loud about being out. There were some people who were... <laughs> You were just being, oh, you got slain. That's all right. Yeah. Oh, fine. now I have to take care of all these mobs. That's all right. <laughs> but yeah, like being at college, you definitely see people being, I think, more, just more themselves, which is really comforting to see, even if you, you, yeah. you yourself are going through your own journey. Another fun thing about college, if you're used to being in a house with your parents and they see what you wear every single day you know going out the door to high school and then you go to a college environment where maybe you know you're not living with them that was a significant like shift for me that was really nice this probably depends on your college climate people don't really care what you wear as long as it's like decent but as far as the style or if you're wearing pajamas or <laughs> anything like that, like people, they do not care. Or you could go the opposite direction. You could get really dressed up. That's um, true. But yeah, going back to relationships, it's good because there's more representation and people tend to have more freedom to be authentic. Mm -hmm. But it's also bad because everyone, if they do start coming out in college, uh, that's when like baggage hits and like, if they're going through any personal development with their family or anything like that, that can also uh, make things a little difficult because everyone's trying to navigate that situation and also their own personal feelings from childhood, which everyone has. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. It's, a, it's a bit hard, even with the time that you're given, to try to, like, relate to your classmates and, like, talk to them outside of just, like, small projects and stuff. If like I bring up a story or something and they might need context behind it. Like like they need queer context behind it. It feels a little difficult to try to introduce that kind of narrative. It's already you're already dealing with trying to discover what you like and what you don't like and having more freedom. So it's understandable when you have more options. Or even if you don't have that many options, but just deciding, hey, for friends, for people I'm going to be hanging out with, it's just easier when they, they already have the background knowledge about mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. So I don't have to constantly educate people. Of course, if you want to educate, that's great, but you're under no obligation to educate. Mm -hmm. And it's an understandable kind of like restriction. Also, if you have privilege and are in a safe environment where you can educate, that's also a really good thing to do, if possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a it's a balance, as, as most things are. When it comes to friends and relationships, though, like romantic relationships or friendships, um, I would say that doesn't apply. And that's something I had to learn. There are definitely healthy ways to have needs and boundaries in friendships and romantic relationships or or things of that nature that is completely valid to have and doesn't apply to like g the general public like those can be two separate distinct things something people have been talking about now that's like anything that like a girl ends up um kind of like obsessing themselves over or generally having an interest in is always belittled it's something that I've been thinking about now as well because it's something that like I've been debating about myself because it's like I think that's one of the reasons that I'm more gender fluid than non-binary because I still I still enjoy some parts of femininity femininity but at the same time I enjoy having a kind of void and non-binariness <laughs> but like growing up I always felt like I have to reject any kind of femininity because I want to hang out with the boys and like and like be cool and N not be like the other girls kind of thing yeah that's a really important topic and it's it probably applies to like people who grow up as women in general mm -hmm. is having some internalized like fear of being either put down or seen as lesser or seen as part of the crowd and not being respected enough for your individual interests that was definitely a phase I went through as well where I actively avoided 
the color pink and nail polish and makeup. Eventually, hopefully in college or as you just grow older in general, you find enough confidence to realize like, first of all, expression and interests are not your gender. Like those are two different things. Mm -hmm. And secondly, the more confident you are with yourself, the less you'll worry about hopefully how society judges you or genders you and you can just lean into what you like. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Oh my god. Huh? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You, you're gonna have to look back on that footage because <laughs> I swear I was on a ledge and a skeleton shot me and I jumped like five different times each time thinking no, I was gonna fall he's off right and I caught there. myself. He's right okay. there. He's pain. I don't think we're gonna I'm be so able to sorry. explore this until later is actually so many months. No, we we got this. We're gonna do it. We just gotta you... build out this platform uh, so it's bigger. Well, I fell. Oh no, Lawrence, so... no. <laughs> you sacrificed yourself for the cause. <laughs> yeah, I really did. I think something good to talk about is student organizations relating to safe spaces in in any kind of institution, I guess. Again, like that unfortunately really is varied depending on your region and your own school's resources. In high school, we had a GSA Gay Straight Alliance organization, and I didn't even know about it until my senior year. And I don't really know if that was just because their marketing wasn't super good or obvious enough, or maybe they just weren't very big. But I definitely encourage people like, even if you don't think there's any like queer related supportive orgs that are student led, uh, check. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, check, don't, check. Um, don't just like think that maybe there isn't. Um, definitely check. If you're feeling up to it, you can always pioneer that and it's not something that has to be completely just you doing it all on your own well first of all usually schools require a faculty member to support or sponsor any student orgs but also there are national chapters of student orgs and you can just uh use their resources their guidelines mm -hmm. and just in like create your own chapter in your own school and i think one thing that I was... Oh my, I just witnessed a suicide of four skeletons. They, they oh were my all gosh. in a pit. They were shooting at each other. And so there was, there was two that shot at each other at the same time. They both died. And then the other two shot at each other at the same time as well and died. And now there's just a pit wow. of bones. Wow. The likelihood of that happening. I don't even know. In college, I feel like this, the orgs are kind of split into two categories. There's student-run ones, and then there's ones kind of led by faculty. So if your college has like a LGBT resource center or anything like that, you can always check if your school's counseling or therapy services have like train, training or faculty specific to being allies or LGBT friendly or LGBT themselves. Yeah. Do you wanna do you wanna talk about is it OSTEM? The Oh yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'll mention OSTEM. So OSTEM stands for like out and then STEM, which is what science, technology, engineering, math, which is a national org that centers around like representation in the field of STEM and research and education. And every single year they have a national convention, so all the chapters Usually the chapters are student led. I think they're largely in colleges. I'm not sure if they are, if they have high school chapters. What's really inspiring is just adult representation, seeing like adult LGBT people talk about their own experiences, navigating the world of working and colleagues, the, the intersection of like being yourself and also interacting with the outside world. Again, like going back to representation and seeing that it is possible to be yourself. It is possible to be respected, have your name respected, your pronouns respected, um, have to not have to hide your personal life or any relationships you're in um, mm -hmm. is sometimes really hard to imagine if you have a history of being in an unwelcoming environment, whether that's family or an institution. I think there is... Um... 
One story that I quickly wanted to share from like the high school experience of, of GSA. So back in freshman year on the, the first, maybe it was the second, oh my goodness, that's a lot of cave spiders, yawn. Oh, oh, oh no, oh no. Oh no, did I open the nest? Oh yeah. gosh, this is, oh, where should I drop down? Okay, I'm coming, hey, I'm, I'm coming sure. this way. <gasps> oh. Oh jeez, <laughs> it's so many. Back in freshman year, I signed up to go to like the meetings and stuff. But um, I think the second time that I went to go, um, the GSA club was actually, I don't want to call it under siege, but like there's a lot of conservative guys who showed up. Oh, like that creeper. Um, there's a lot of conservative guys who showed up and just kind of took up the safe space. They weren't actively saying like, oh, it's not okay and stuff and like tried to, to like be discriminatory, but they were very much trying to the space and try to be annoying and everything. Since we didn't want to like actively like kick them out or anything because there's not really like uh, solid evidence that we can kick them out because they're being homophobic or something because they're like treading on the line of it you know at one point we were watching a video of like people coming out to like big influencers so we could learn about um it was just a video about influencers coming out and stuff and in one of in one of the videos or something like that um the influencers just like generally cusses it's not like the worst cuss ever but like you know and one of the guys gets very like he over exaggerates the 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 situation he kind of starts threatening like i what why would you show this video this is so bad i'm going to go report you guys to the ap that you guys are showing inappropriate content and stuff and then we're for us because we're already we were already basically fighting for the club to even be there and the administration wasn't exactly known to be the most nice administration, so we were very worried about the administration jumping on any kind of reason to like, to like, get rid of the club itself. Thankfully, the guy was actually bluffing, but the whole experience was extremely uncomfortable and invalidating, especially knowing that one of the guys who, who like, led his friends and buddies to show up to the meeting was in my engineering class so i would have to face him afterwards every single day full on knowing what he did and it was just a very awkward kind of tension because i never in my classes actively said hello i'm queer this is my identity and now like he knows about it and it's like it feels it just felt very unsafe at that moment and it just was terrible since it was supposed to be a safe space I think the biggest thing is, like you said, you knew that these people were intentionally had animosity, obviously not there in the spirit of what the group had gathered for. Unless a bunch of people come together and say that, oh, you know, this happened and I'm a witness. And even then, you're not on an even playing field. Like you felt like the administration probably um, wouldn't be super kind towards like your purpose. The amount of energy and effort improving and justification and having to fight for like why your feelings mattered in that moment is just a lot of labor and a lot of time. And that's why um, safe space is a term that often gets mocked or kind of like made fun of, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly like why they exist is to be in an environment where hopefully like the possibility of like feeling threatened and microaggression is another term that gets mocked a lot unfortunately but it's a very useful term because that's what happened like intimidation when it's coverted and it's kind of under the table and it's concealed in a certain way it makes it a lot harder to fight back and um when you feel like you're already having to justify yourself and have proof for certain things it increases like the standard for, am I allowed, am I going to allow myself to be upset by this as well because of emotional resilience and just, um, you know, coping with your environment. So yeah. a lot of factors at play. I think from an advice standpoint, it's really important when you're in a student org organization, maybe not so much in college, but very much in high school to know who is the teacher who is sponsoring this club because 
they're probably going to be your first potential point of contact to address situations like these. And I won't lie, sometimes there are teachers in, in high school environments who are not very involved. They just kind of like sponsor a club to sponsor it and they don't really go to meetings or they don't really know what's going on. Just letting a faculty member know, someone who's on your side and who you know will support you, like, hey, this is a thing that happened. So that if something worse does happen in the future or if it is a repeat event, it's not off the record. Also having records of what happens during meetings is can be really valuable in case anything happens or goes wrong. Um, just like a little description or if any media is shown or if you have any schedules of like, oh, we're gonna watch this queer film or oh, we're gonna watch these, yeah, these videos of like people coming out. I'm really sorry that happened. Unfortunately, I'm sure it's not that uncommon. Um, yeah, it's just, it was a weird experience, but like, ultimately, kind of, it feels like it was expected to happen at one point, just because as when you have a club that is so open and accepting, it's it was kind of bound to at one point upset someone who just wants to upset other people. Because I, would, I wouldn't say like, those people were actively persecuting gay students or anything, obviously. Well, see, I would, I would actually challenge that because they did even... Sorry, I, I need to correct that, like, violently. But like... I mean, see, here's the thing, though, again, is like, I think as LGBT rights improve in the United States and hopefully as social social perception improves. Aggressions and intimidation will become more covert and less obvious. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's like not as bad. Because in the at the end of the day it's coming from like the same problematic place of intolerance and acting on on that to, you know, restrict other people's freedoms. I mean, they threatened, first of all, on false pretenses to report y'all, which is pretty significant. And they were also mocking and make fun, making fun of and, you know, overblowing something that was, you know, coming out is, is a really significant step for a lot of people. So that's not small either. Mm -hmm. Essentially, essentially, I'm giving you permission to be mad about this. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm giving you permission am... to be like, that was shitty, it was wrong, and he shouldn't have done it, and it was actively harmful, because I think when I was younger, that was something where I was so focused on trying to be fair, objective, reasonable, not giving people an excuse to dismiss my thoughts or dismiss me as, you know, like, too extreme. Um, or not being empathetic enough to other people, you know, you should also be allowed to to have emotions and be upset. So yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah. true. This is this is all so gonna be part of the series of me working through uh, trying to excuse other people's shitty behavior. Well, to be fair, also, oh, why did you separate the bed? No homo. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no homo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fine. I mean, I, I don't really care. Um, oh, that's funny. Oh, this beautiful sunrise. Good luck to everyone going back to school, whether you're staying at home, dealing with family, or navigating new college experiences, or just having to deal with online classes. The pain of the online classes. It starts for us tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Our, um, our, our college semester starts tomorrow. Well, awesome. thanks everyone, and goodbye. <laughs> goodbye.